We're alive. Well, you're alive. We're alive. We We're alive. It. And yeah, so. We've been in Mexico for the past two months, halfway through our journey from Alaska to Argentina. We've seen the best this country has to offer and van life so far has been generally going really well. Until this week. Today is not a good morning. Today is not a good morning. Well, <laughs> what it is, it is. We just had the worst sleep of our lives last night because it was 26 degrees and 80% humidity and our max fan kept turning itself off. If you saw last week's video, we are parked up in the south of Mexico. We are just one block back from Mexico's only nude beach, which we fully embraced in last week's video. But we are parked up in this little compound in Tonio's place and it was intense last night because the fan keeps breaking and I was up just every hour, I had to take the fuse out, put the fuse back in. And then eventually at two o'clock, it stayed on all night and we managed to get a decent sleep. But like, up until that point... It's like sleeping in a swimming pool. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> but also, we're parked in Tonio's place, which is this lovely, secure kind of area, which means we could sleep with all the doors open. But that also means we had front row seats to his dogs, <laughs> serenading us all night, barking at every leaf that moved. <laughs> <laughs> I don't we, think they slept at all. We've slept better, but we're all good. We're off today. Fun life along the Mexican coast continues. Just have to put my phone on charge. Oh my god, everything in here gets so hot. Should we get right. the aircon on, please? There. Well, that was a perfect little place to stay. 50 meters from the beach, secured parking, 150 pesos. Yeah. Electricity if we wanted it as well. So good. As but, well. Yeah, really, really good. A really nice little place. Okay, so the plan today is to head about an hour and a half along the coast. We're going to be crossing into Guatemala in the next couple of weeks, so we do have to make tracks and see what else the Mexican coast has to offer. We've still got. 20 minutes to go and the road has disappeared it is just sand potholes big stones all bloody hell i was about to say god i'm but the tour buses don't come down here what do you know what is there another way in that we didn't know about oh, probably. how have these buses made it down that road that Zipolite and Mazante felt like little Caribbean island places. Yeah. This feels even more so. There are no roads here, it is just sand. It's surprisingly busy, but we are camping in a place called Camping Don Taco and it's run by a Dutch overlanding couple. And it's a popular, highly recommended place to come and stay on the coast. It's very tightly packed in though, and we've just got to wait for these French overlanders to leave and then we've got their spot. So we're just patiently waiting now and then we've got to try and squeeze in. Johnny's coming up. It was at this point things went downhill. Chess began feeling faint and before long was probably the most ill I've ever seen her. We think she'd come down with food poisoning. She was throwing up every 20 minutes for around 6 hours and in 35 degree heat getting severely dehydrated and confused. She even called me Clive. <laughs> Thankfully, she slept through the night and began to recover, although she was pretty weak and not eating properly. With our entry into Guatemala looming and vet appointments due, when Chess was feeling stronger, we drove four hours inland to the town of San Cristobal. It was one of the most dangerous drives we have ever done. The wind here was so severe, at one point we thought we'd have to stop driving. What we thought was a roadblock was actually lorries seeking shelter under a bridge.
This guy wasn't so lucky. The wind had pushed him onto the opposite side of the road and toppled him over completely with his fuel leaking onto the road. Eventually, and surprisingly, we made it to San Cristobal in one piece. Hey guys, I'm just keen you. There you what go. a week. Yes. What a week. Probably the most crazy shit show of a week. It's we've been, had. I think it's probably been the worst week we've had since traveling, I think. Or well, for you anyway, for me, oh. I was fine, but. I don't know, you. you know, being ill, like I've never been that ill in my life and to do it in 35 degree heat, three foot from your partner with two dogs in a tiny van was just not the one. It was, it was just... You didn't care, did you? It was just, it ha everything had to come out. Yeah, well, I as did. As bad as that sounds. <laughs> as in, you needed to throw up, throw up, throw up, throw up, yeah. It was, it wasn't, it wasn't good. I've never seen dog poo bags get filled up so quickly oh, in my life. Oh, you can't see <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and that's all we had to hand was dog poo bags and it was like... They are are surprisingly handy like so I didn't have to keep leaving the van yeah but honestly I think I either had food poisoning or dengue fever the symptoms are really similar and both of them are incredibly common down here in fact the amount of people that I've spoken to since who had have had dengue fever or food poisoning or both down yeah. here I think it's like a rite of passage yeah exactly you can't come to southern Mexico and not get food poisoning or dengue yeah. fever and not it, almost die exactly but you're okay now aren't you yeah so if like that was just like we thought that was the end of it and once I started feeling better we were gonna head up here and then we hit the road of death <laughs> honestly we? guys the 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 drive here was horrendous it was the heat but the wind coming along the southern coast was unbelievable like as you saw from the clips like previously oh my god there was trucks over everywhere yeah it was we managed really to film it. two lorries that had been tipped over but there were so many more like they had just been toppled over yeah 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 and we were doing probably no more than 25 30 mile an hour on yeah. like a 80 mile an hour road or 70 mile an hour just road just like crawling to because we were just yeah. driving like a big sail yeah exactly yeah and it was coming across us and but oh, yeah crazy. we were up in San Cristobal now we're alive well, you're alive we're alive we we're alive it. and yeah so we made it, but San Cristobal is meant to be one of the most beautiful towns in the whole of Mexico. And We've not gone in yet. We've been in this little hippie campsite for, what, four or five days, just relaxing, getting you back to full strength. Yes. And yeah, we're going to go and head in, aren't we? I'm not just eating rice anymore. No, you can have some proper food. In fact, I really don't want any Mexican food today. No, we're going to go and see if we can find... Well, we've, we've, we've scoped out a Korean chicken place, so... I, I just want pasta or Asian food. I just don't want to see tacos or yeah. Mexican food after last week. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to go and head in now, shall we? Yes. We need to get some clean clothes. Lucky enough, the laundrette is en route to town, so it's what, two minutes down this road? A little Dick Whittington bag. A little, yeah, like I'm off to school. <laughs> you probably see our pants hanging up for the world to see. Hello, buenos dias. Three and a half kilos and pick it up in a couple of days. Good, Good job we've got some pants to last us. Because <laughs> your thong's really digging in. San Cristobal de las Casas is the jewel in the crown of Chiapas, this eastern region of Mexico. It's a beautiful town famous for its colonial architecture and rich indigenous culture, all enveloped by towering forested highlands. I was in like the indigenous craft market. It's the first time in Mexico that I've heard indigenous languages being spoken and not Spanish around. I do Yeah. What are you going for? I have no idea what this is. I thought it was a donut, but it's rock hard. Thank you. You're not selling it to me. Out of ten? That's a 
solid two out of ten. Oh no. Yeah, it's just too stodgy. Damn. Watch him eat it anyway. I'll eat it. <laughs> Paid for it. So tell your first impressions maybe of San it's Cristobal. It's a really, really cool city. It's very, very indigenous. There's a lot of indigenous culture here from like the markets and the food. The buildings are like beautiful little, these like terracotta roofs. It's just a really pretty little place. All over the world, there are amber mines, the most important one being those of the Baltic Sea, then the mines in the Dominican Republic, followed by the ones in Chiapas. Third best. This region of Mexico is really famous for its gemstones, um, amber and jade in particular. Now, I've had this amber ring since I was since my 18th birthday, and they've got an amber museum here housed in like an old convent. 50 pesos each to get in. Go and have a look at some amber, shall we? Got my instructions in English. <laughs> So amber is a fossilized resin originating from pine trees or other conifers. So this, <laughs> this um, convent is dated from the, uh, the arrival of the first Spanish conquistadors. Uh, after enduring many challenges and changes, the friars established themselves in San Cristobal in 1624, wow. where the former convent of La Masid now stands. La Masid? Masid? Masid. Wow, oh, this is really nice. Okay. Well, this is as far as my uh, tour goes because everyone else is in Spanish and I can't really. <laughs> Very so is that how it looks when it's like in the. I think so, yeah. And then you like break it or polish it, I guess. Wow. There's a fly in there. It's really hard to capture it on camera because of the reflection of the glass. But in some of these amber pieces, the flies are quite big and you can see with like the bugs. And then on other ones, they're just tiny little specks and you can't, you, have, you need the magnifying glass to see that they're flies. Like you wouldn't know otherwise. A tiny little flea, a harmless little flea. Whoa, look at them all in this. Wow. Now I've seen a film that starts with a mosquito in amber and it doesn't end well. <laughs> is it Jurassic Park? It's Jurassic Park, <laughs> it is Jurassic Park. This one's got a scorpion in it. Got a tiny little scorpion on the left hand side. Oh yeah. Now this is what I like. Look at this amber jewellery. Looks like an amber cake. San Cristobal. Yeah, it's really different to everywhere we've been in Mexico, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I say it's so much more indigenous. Um, but I really like it. It's busy and it's quiet. It's very friendly. I, I, one of the friendliest places I think I found in Mexico, what well, we found in Mexico. Yeah.
good? No, there's another post on the Chappas Facebook group. There's a roadblock on the road we need to take to get into Guatemala. I don't know how long it's going to be there for. So next week we need to try and find some sort of safe route out of Mexico to Guatemala. Not easy, is it? Not easy. Not easy at all. At the moment, it's not looking good to get out of Mexico.